everyone welcome back to explore electronics in this video let's see amplitude modulation and derivation of amplitude modulation by taking the modulating signal and the carrier and also let us see the waveforms so if you look at the definition amplitude modulation is a type of modulation by which amplitude of the carrier signal is changed we need to clearly observe here and we need to understand we are going to change the amplitude of the carrier signal and in accordance with the message signal or the modulating signal what we have this is our modulating signal so this is the modulating signal means we are also calling it as the message signal okay this is message signal means this is our interested signal or we say this is the baseband signal so we are not supposed to alter this so we are going to use the carrier signal this carrier signal amplitude is going to be varied as the modulating signal amplitude varies if this goes high you can see here in the amplitude modulated signal the carrier signal amplitude is increasing as it decreases modulating signal amplitude decreases here also the signal amplitude decreasing this is how we are going to change the property of the carrier signal in the modulation since it is a amplitude modulation we are going to change the amplitude of the carrier signal as the amplitude varies in the modulating signal now let us look at the expressions for modulating signal carrier signal and the amplitude modulated signal so the first waveform indicating the baseband signal or the modulating signal here you can observe this is an ac signal so we, we say it is time varying signal so in x axis you can see time so m of t m indicating the modulating signal m of t is equal to am here am is the maximum peak voltage from here to here if you measure this is am am cos cos means the signal is starting from this point if the signal is starting from this point we say sin we can take sin wave also and also we can derive i have taken cos wave for better understanding so am is the peak voltage of the modulating signal cos omega m here omega indicating the angular frequency that is 2 pi f m corresponds to the modulating signal so here fm is the frequency of this signal this fm is a low frequency signal fm is low okay this is and with respect to t this is modulating signal so now if you look at the carrier signal c of t indicating the carrier signal which is with respect to time ac is the amplitude of the carrier signal it is also a cos wave here omega c indicating 2 pi fc and t is a time and modulated signal if you look at since it is an amplitude modulation what we are supposed to do here the carrier wave amplitude is varied with respect to the modulating signal amplitude variation that's why am of t is the modulated signal is equal to ac that is the carrier signal amplitude is going to be varied with respect to m of t means why we have taken m of t means this is instantaneous values we need to take it is continuously varying so we are going to look at the amplitude of the m of t and we are going to add that with ac that is amplitude of the carrier signal with that it is a cos wave cos of omega c into t here what is omega c again it is 2 pi fc means the modulated signal this signal is going to get the frequency of the carrier means after modulating signal is modulated with the carrier we are going to get the modulated signal which frequency is same as the carrier signal if you look at these two the frequencies will be same it is also having fc this is also having fc so this is the basic understanding of modulating signal carrier signal and the modulated signal now let us derive the expression for this modulated signal by placing this m of t from this expression we are going to substitute this m of t over here and let us simplify the expression for am of t you can see here am of t is equal to ac plus m of t into cos omega c t as it is i have taken here m of t we know that it is let me write m of t will be equal to am 
cos omega m into t so we have replaced that m of t over here and as it is cos omega t will be written and just multiply this ac into cos omega ct now you can observe here itself ac into cos omega ct is the carrier signal plus am cos omega mt into cos omega ct here we got two cos terms so to make use of this cos a into cos b expression effectively we are just rearranging and dividing and multiplying by 2 so 1 by 2 into 2 over here and this is same and this becomes am divided by 2 into 2 cos omega mt cos omega ct now cos a cos b is equal to 1 by 2 into cos a plus b plus cos a minus b so it becomes 2 into cos a cos b is equal to cos of a plus b plus cos of a minus b now we will be having cos this is term a and this is term b here for your reference a is equal to omega m into t and b is equal to omega c into t now look at these two a and b and substitute over here this term will be as it is ac cos omega ct plus am divided by 2 as it is and here we are adding ac divided by ac extra i will tell you why because because of the modulation index parameter we are going to show in this derivation so am divided by this am divided by ac is the modulation index to get this we are just multiplying and dividing by ac okay let us come back to the cost terms so here cos a cos b uh, expression if we apply now it becomes cos this is a and this is b similarly a this is b t we have written outside now if you just written the same expression by taking the modulation index expression as am divided by ac so this am divided by this ac it gives the modulation index we are representing with ma sometimes we can write it as ma or modulation index can also be written as mu so now if we multiply this term with this it becomes ac cos omega ct as it is ac divided by 2 into ma that is modulation index cos omega c plus omega m into t plus ac divided by 2 into modulation index cos omega c minus omega m into t now as we know this omega c and omega m are angular frequencies so 2 pi f c 2 pi f m can be written now if we see this is the first term this is the second term and this is the third term we have three terms in that first term is a carrier signal as it is the second signal we have is upper side band and the third term we have is the lower side band of the modulated signal let us see what is upper side band and the lower side band uh, how we are going to represent that in a spectrum so we have three components here the amplitude of the upper side band and the lower side band you can see it is same but the term difference is that fc plus fm here here fc minus fm this is what the derivation of amplitude modulated signal now we can have another approach also so standard equation of am if you look at am of t is equal to ac into 1 plus ka into m of t into cos omega ct here what is ka this is amplitude sensitivity parameter so how we are going to take this ka into account is that if we substitute this mt as am cos omega mt over here you can see this ka and am together we can call it as modulation index also so mu can be written as ka into am also in the previous expression over here we have seen am divided by ac is also the modulation index am divided by ac is also gives the same result so for correct modulation we need to keep this modulation index less than one always less than one in the sense if you compare this am and ac ac should be high what is ac here it is amplitude of the carrier signal so amplitude of the carrier should be high compared to the amplitude of the message signal or the modulating signal so ac should be high then only we are going to get less than one as modulation index so and if you compare the frequency also 
obviously we need to use the higher frequency carrier now if we take the carrier wave parameters fc should be greater than the message signal frequency fm it is too much greater than usually double and similarly if we take the carrier amplitude ac it should be greater than message signal am then only the modulation will be like this otherwise what happens if mu goes more than one more than one in the sense if the message signal amplitude is more compared to the amplitude of the carrier means what happens here you can observe there is a phase reversal means we are calling it as over modulation right so these two signals should not cross over the x-axis origin that is what the correct modulation is if we are going to get like this then we say it is over modulated we are supposed to keep this mu the means the value of modulation index less than one always in amplitude modulation and also we need to keep fc too much greater compared to fm obviously fc is very high since it is a carrier signal fm is very low since it is an information and now if you look at the spectrum these are the two side bands we are looking at uh, we have seen in the expression this is the upper side band and this is the lower side band here also you can see this is lower side band and the upper side bands so this spectrum representing the message signal spectrum this is representation of the modulated signal spectrum so this is about the amplitude modulation this derivation is very very important for the exam point of view and also for the understanding of the next concepts so in the next video let us see frequency modulation and the detection part also how the demodulation works in amplitude modulation thank you